Okay, we're going to continue our discussion of angular motion talking about the concept of angular speed. Okay? And in order to do that, I just want to kind of draw an analogy. The good thing about all of these topics in angular motion is that they always have a parallel or a complementary meaning when you talk about linear motion. Okay, we've already talked about linear speed. Okay, linear just means in a line. Okay, so what does speed mean? It's meters per second. How far do you go per unit time, right? That's what speed is. Miles per hour is a distance per unit time. Meters per second is a distance per unit time. So what do you think angular speed would be? Well, it's going to be something per unit time because it's a speed, right? And since I'm telling you it's angular speed, it's probably going to be angle per unit time, which is exactly what it is. Angular speed is just simply a measure of, okay, here is an angle, my hand with respect to this paper, okay? This is an angle. It's not moving, okay? It's a constant angle. Now, if I start to move, okay, this angle is changing and it's changing with so many degrees per unit time, or so many radians per unit time. If I move my hand faster, the angular speed is faster. If I move my hand slower, the angular speed is much slower, because the number of degrees per second is slower, and the number of degrees per second is faster. It's the same thing as a linear speed, it's just dealing with angles instead of with distance. So, the angular speed is always, uh, in every book, that you'll probably come across. The angular speed is represented by um, an omega. This is a lowercase omega, okay? And I'm gonna put a bar over it to tell you this is an average, average angular speed that we're gonna calculate here that we're gonna talk about. And uh, you'll see a direct parallel with this than uh, uh, what you saw back in your linear motion. It's gonna be the final angle minus the initial angle. This is the second angle, this is the initial angle divided by the final time minus the initial time. And this is nothing more, if you take the final value of an angle and subtract the initial value of the angle, it's nothing more than the change in the angle. How, how much did the angle change? Okay, delta angle, that's what delta means. Divided by the change in the time, delta time. And this equation is exactly what I showed you with my hand here. This is telling you how fast did my hand change, how many degrees did my change, uh, did my hand change, and how long did it take it to happen? Angles per unit time. That's exactly what it's telling me. How many, how many uh, degrees did I change, and how many seconds did it take me to, to change? So the units of this, what do you think it would be? Well, on the top, you've got radians, or degrees, but in most cases, you're going to have radians. At the bottom, you're going to have seconds. So the units are going to be radians per second, and like I say, almost always you're going to deal with this. You could also have degrees per second, etc. But radians per second is what we're going to be using, okay? And this is an average number because I'm just looking at the endpoints. I'm looking at where was the hand here uh, at point, you know, two. Where did the hand start at point one? I'm looking at the endpoints and I'm calculating the uh, time it took to get there. Okay, so I'm kind of taking an average number, and it's very, very similar to linear velocity, which we've already studied, which we defined in a previous video as um, delta x over delta t. And you can start to see the similarity. If you go back to the other section on linear velocity, you'll see that we define linear velocity as the change in um, position and the change in time. Okay, This is simply the change in the angle and the change in the time. It's really the same concept, you're just talking about angles instead of with position. Okay, So that's pretty easy. We're also got another quantity called, can you guess, angular acceleration. Okay, so we're going to define the same concepts that we defined before, sp uh, speed being one of them, um, angles being another one, and here we're going to talk about acceleration. Now, I, again, I tell you, there's going to be a direct analogy to what you already know. So that's the good news, okay? It's really the same stuff that you already know, okay? What does a regular old acceleration mean, okay? When you have acceleration, it is the change in the velocity, okay? It's how much are you speeding up? How much are you slowing down? How fast is your velocity changing per unit time? That's what the unit of acceleration is when you're talking about linear acceleration. This is no different. It's just that you're talking about an angle. So, again, I have an angle here, okay? And this hand is moving. Well, this hand might be speeding up, or this hand might be slowing down, okay? So the, the speed may not be constant. I may be, again, speeding up, 
or I may be slowing down, okay? Each case, I'm doing some acceleration. I am changing my angular velocity every second that I go along, and that's what exactly what I'm trying to calculate here. So, drawing an analogy to your linear speed and your linear acceleration, the angular acceleration is, in most books, denoted by a Greek letter alpha. I'm going to put a bar over it just to tell you and remind you uh, that it is an average quantity. And I'm going to go ahead and write this in blue. Okay. Average ex angular acceleration is what this means. Okay. And what it is, is it's going to be the change in my um, angular velocity per unit time. So I'm going to have the final value of my angular velocity, which is omega, minus my initial value of my angular velocity, which was omega. And then I'm going to also have the time it took for this to happen. Okay? Change in velocity, angular velocity, change in time. Okay? And um, because this is just simply a, a change, it's going to be very simpler, simple, uh, similar to this. So it's going to be delta omega, change in angular speed, uh, and the change in the time. So you have the change in angular speed, change in time. Okay? And the units, you can probably guess, you're going to have, what is the unit of omega? Radians per second. Okay? So on the top, you're going to have you're going to have radians per second on the top. On the bottom, you're simply going to have seconds. Okay, so the real unit is radians per second squared. Okay. Now I hope that you're able to see that there's a direct analogy here to linear acceleration because don't forget in linear acceleration we define the acceleration a, the average acceleration a, is equal to the change in the linear velocity over the change in the time, okay? And the units here were meters per second squared, okay? Meters per second squared, radians per second squared. It's the, in the linear case, the change in the velocity over the change in the time, and in this case, it's the change in the angular velocity and the change in the time. So you see the concepts are the same, it's just that instead of talking about moving in a straight line, you're just trying to talk about how fast or slow you're moving uh, around and around on a circle.